You're listening to Pushing the Envelope, Life at the Cutting Edge of Customs Innovation. I'm Tom Muller with the Cross-Border Research Association. On this show, we explore the frontiers of customs creativity in conversations with customs and logistics experts, technology innovators, research scientists, and other leaders in the field. Industry insiders call this show the PenCast because it's part of PenCP, a network for boosting customs innovation funded by the European Union under the Horizon 2020 program. Today, I'm speaking with Enrica Noyokia, the director of Customs Clear, an e-learning platform for professionals who need customs knowledge and for those who want to share it. Hello, Enrica. Thanks for joining me on Pushing the Envelope. Hello, Tom. Thank you for having me here. It's it's uh, I, I've been mining your website and and a very very impressive uh, range of of resources online, which we'll talk about in a minute. But perhaps to start off, you could give our listeners an idea about Customs Clear, the the background, why it was founded, what it does, and the challenges that it's designed to address. Um, yes, uh, Customs Clear was founded 2019, uh, not so long ago, and until now we were developing the knowledge base, uh, as you noticed, uh, and it was founded tackling the challenge of customs knowledge, which is uh, not available uh, to the sufficient extent in many countries. Uh, and the idea was born uh, more many years ago in 2010, um, when I was thinking that um, in Lithuania there are no sources of knowledge, of customs knowledge, and we started issuing an, a journal, uh, a monthly journal, Customs Law for Practitioners. And then in 2019, uh, as we were successful in Lithuania with this project, we said we would like to expand, to go international. And uh, this way, Customs Clear was founded. And besides the articles, we also offer video courses. Right, as I said, I've I visited your website and and kind of trolled around, and it's a wealth of, uh, of of information, of knowledge, and I suspect also of contacts, um, people you could reach out to if you had more specific questions. Um, am I right in saying you're trying to create a kind of a platform for knowledge sharing? Uh, that's correct. Uh, as we see, uh, you said e-learning platform when introducing, we call Customs Clear more a marketplace where the knowledge owners and the knowledge seekers meet and exchange. So it's a technical solution. We don't create knowledge ourselves. We bring together those persons to exchange. Right. Fantastic. And that's very much in line with the with the PenCP Network's philosophy, as you know, creating a platform in which experts can share knowledge, chart the future together, hopefully, working together, people from all sides of the uh, of the of the table, as it were, um, working together rather than working against each other or in silence, which quite often happens. Yes, I, I found this amazing when I was talking first to PenCP. Uh, I heard PenCP is uh, for customs practitioners. And they said, okay, we are also for customs practitioners. And then I realized that PenCP is for customs practitioners from customs <laughs> and we are more oriented from business. But I think that's not the best approach. In fact, we should have one platform for everybody, for customs and business where players on the same side. <laughs> So. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's that's the thing that again and again I encounter whenever I speak with anyone, everyone from research scientists on the one side and 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 business people to to customs and postal authorities on the other is at the end of the day, you know, what's good for one is is almost certain to be good for all uh, if it's done properly. If uh, you know, if 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 a good data system is set up, if good data sharing is is applied. Across, across the board, then then everyone wins, right? It is so. Uh, I see that we have the same goal, the same vision, the vision of uh, secure, safe, sustainable, and um, a seamless cross-border trade, be it customs, be it trade. Most traders uh, aim to be compliant, and only few uh, break the law. So mm -hmm. I see, therefore, we need knowledge. The knowledge is the key. To, to, to reach this vision and we must work together to collaborate. Mm -hmm. what, what are among the wealth of resources that you have available uh, at customsclearance.net? 
Um, what are, could you highlight a couple that you're particularly proud of or that, or that have gotten your, your imagination going? Uh, um, I'm very proud of all the people who contribute their knowledge in producing articles, first of all. It's not producing, it's, it's creating the right word. And really, uh, I learn uh, each time when I edit and look at them. Uh, on single window, there are great articles. Now we tackle the topic uh, green custom sustainable trade and, and these topics, which I personally find very interesting. And we are also very proud of uh, that um, Customs Knowledge Institute, one of the content providers, launched a very extensive course recently on EU customs, covering, I, I would say, almost the all fields of customs, and which is a great basis for everyone who start uh, their careers in customs. Sounds like I need to take that course myself. <laughs> I'm sure I'd learn something. <laughs> yes. Fantastic. That's that's really, really impressive. How do you personally, could talk a little bit about your background. How did you get into this line of work? Uh, I started my career in logistics. Uh, and then I thought that, oh, that would be much more interesting not only to organize transportations, but also to do customs declarations myself. And then uh, I did this, I became customs brokers. By the way, customs uh, brokers profession is licensed here in Lithuania, we must do an exam. Uh, and I was enjoying this profession for many years. Uh, and when I decided to expand my experience and to look what else I could do, I was also custom supervisor for Baltic States at a multinational manufacturing company. So I looked at, at customs from various perspectives, logistics, customs brokerage. I also led a customs brokerage company and also from manufacturing side. This all uh, revealed the lack of customs knowledge for businesses and that we need really one platform and, and one place where we share and where we learn and where we co-create the knowledge. So uh, this is the background. And, and today what I'm doing, I'm leading uh, the uh, Lithuanian Customs Practitioners Association, which was founded also in 2019. Uh, and we are organizing an international conference in May. Uh, I'm also editor of several uh, journals on customs, the Lithuanian one and one English customs compliance and risk management journal uh, and, and customs clear. <laughs> Wow, is that all? <laughs> you sound like you're a pretty busy woman these days. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and as a, a native Lithuanian, what, what particular uh, perspectives do you have on customs? Why why is customs important for, for Lithuania more than for many places? Um, uh, currently, of course, uh, we uh, deal a lot with sanctions uh, because of the war in Ukraine. and and. I think uh, everything has a uh, what is uh, what is bad has a good side as well. So, and I think this draw the particular attention what a powerful tool trade is uh, to help Ukraine in this war, and how it is important for businesses to comply, for customs to comply, and again the the importance of knowledge no, knowledge management, knowledge sharing, because when the sanctions were introduced. Uh, there were a lot of issues and 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 we understood once again that we must learn and we must collaborate together. So um, this is the main aspect. On the other hand, so Lithuania was always um, a transit country. In West and East, we have a well-developed logistics sector, so customs was important. And currently, of course, we are refocusing to other markets uh, such as Central Asia, for example, and building collaborations there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ex extremely good answer. That's that's very thought provoking. Um, it, it, it seems almost uh, in my conversations that crises, uh, the crisis of the Ukraine war, um, the crisis of the pandemic, have have been a challenge that customs uh, that quite often leads to an evolution in customs. Is that is that a fair statement? Uh, yes, I, I I couldn't more than agree. This is very true. And, you know, now we are also discussing there are too many, we think, as customs practitioners from business perspective, too many laws, too many regulations in Lithuania. And it's jungle of law in customs and trade. And we were discussing in, in Lithuania, there is a, a 
kind of advisory center to government uh, on uh, law planning and law uh, impact evaluation. And they also said we need a good crisis to deal with the inflation of law to get it really in, in order. So yeah, crises have some good impact as well. Right. That, that, what is that expression? Let no good crisis go to waste. Is yeah. That, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's yeah. very true. What What do you think, um, in in from the Lithuanian perspective or from the broader perspective that you have? What What is um, the pandemic taught us about how customs should operate and how it sometimes does operate? Oh, pandemic brought a lot of innovations. <laughs> Thank you for that. The pandemic, we can see really. So what, what it has taught that we really don't need to bring paper documents to customs in many cases that we can uh, work per email and so. And uh, fortunately, uh, we got used to that and we are not back to this situation. Uh, we learned also communicate better, I think, trust uh, more in each other and and resort many processes as well in businesses and in customs too, I'd say. Yeah. Now remote working is also uh, um, an option for customs officials as well. I think you use the word trust, and, and that's one that I that keeps coming up in my conversations with people in various parts of uh, of the customs universe. Uh, trusting each other is really key, isn't it, to working well together? Um, yes, it's it's such a broad topic. <laughs> I don't know where to start because trust, trust. I really trust to collaboration, mm -hmm. and I see a big issue in 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 in, in that. Customs controls, customs facilitation, we say it this way, but we don't see customs business collaboration. Uh, where we don't see when, uh, let, uh, I said, when we read uh, the vice person's group report, uh, we find collaboration among the government authorities and something, it is said nothing about customs business collaboration. Why? <laughs> Probably the trust is missing. I don't know uh, what is the issue, but yeah. So trust for me is about collaboration. And I think we should introduce the third concept in, in the legislation, customs business collaboration, or, or change facilitation to collaboration. To, to make sure I understood, you, what, what concept should we introduce? The, the trust concept? Is that what you said? Yes, the trust concept, uh, when we look from a customs perspective, there are two major terms. There is customs uh, control, to control businesses, mm -hmm. right? And another con concept is to facilitate. But mm -hmm. this is the one-way approach. This is kind of power position. I either control business or I either facilitate. I choose what to do. But the, uh, the work should be both sides. So business and customs should collaborate. And I'm missing this in the vice person's group report. And I'm missing this in many communications. So really trust is about cooperation, collaboration. And we must um, talk more about that and focus on that. That's extremely important because it's all very well to say that part of your mandate is facilitation. But if you don't collaborate, if you don't work day in, day out together, uh, customs and business, then then ultimately that's just a word, right? It it doesn't actually translate into better better work for everybody. Uh, from what you said, uh, I uh, you mentioned that word word. I think the words shape how we think, and if we say customs control or customs facilitate, and we don't speak about collaboration, so we think then from the power position, customs thinks. And trade also thinks about us and them. So we should forget this. <laughs> there is no us, no them. There is us who collaborate towards compliance, towards all the good things we want to create together. Now, this is a big picture question, but how how, um, how would you characterize the importance of customs in the current world of commerce, e-commerce? Um, I mean, another way of looking at it is what, what do you what do you enjoy most about this about this world that you're the, that you've involved you've been involved with for decades now? Uh, yes, uh, I enjoy. I will start with what I enjoy. So I enjoy most the global impact customs mix. So mm. 
treat for me is the key for uh, international peace, collaboration, for, for economic prosperity, and so on. And customs is, is this, and customs either hinders or facilitates trade. And this is exciting in how many ways we can uh, contribute and overcome the challenges cooperating together. So, and uh, about customs impact, uh, I would like to take to emphasize probably three aspects from all the complex customs world. And the one uh, striking aspect was uh, a practical example here from Lithuania. In 2021, Taiwan opened an embassy in Vilnius and uh, China in return deleted Lithuania from customs systems, the name Lithuania. What does it mean? That all the goods from Lithuania were immediately blocked from, from entering China. So, and that was striking. So how politics and customs can come together and, and the customs IT systems, how can they be used? So this is one aspect. Another aspect, also recent examples from the sanctions field. Uh, businesses don't understand fully what the power customs has, uh, because here in Lithuania, we had more cases, law cases, where courts uh, had to clarify that yes, indeed, customs has the power to decide to seize their goods and only customs can decide. So no other authorities shouldn't be involved. So customs has the power is also an important aspect. And the third aspect, very important for me, is it's the amazing aspect how customs is involved in all the mega trends to make the world a better place to cope with the climate change. And the keywords of those megatrends are circular economy, green transition, the sustainable trade, and also, of course, the use of the disruptive technologies. And here I must say the PNCP does a wonderful work bringing everybody together to collaborate and to innovate in customs. Thank you. Uh, you you mentioned that the green customs is a particular interest of yours. Is that right? Uh, it's uh, of particular interest because it's uh, the urgent issue we all need to tackle. So yeah. and and uh, we need to talk as much as we can about that to raise awareness. And therefore, we are focusing and also. Uh, uh, having articles on that topic quite many and we have this topic also on the upcoming conference Take fantastic let's talk a bit about your upcoming conference this is uh, oh, another yeah. one of the hats you're wearing right now uh another big job I, I would imagine organizing a major international conference tell us a bit about the conference and and its aims and its um and the people who will be taking part so um it's really amazing what we have preparing because the conference, as you said, will be international and speakers are, com are coming. Speakers, by the way, are from customs, from business, from academia, and they are coming from various countries, Poland, Germany, France, uh, Netherlands, Lithuania, of course, and, and the UK and other. Um, the, the idea of the conference actually came uh, thinking about collaboration. Uh, when we as LCP, the Lithuanian Customs Practitioners Association, uh, started our activities and uh, started talking to other associations, uh, I went to a German association, Ausenwirtschaftsrunde, uh, it is called, and I'm a member here as well. And then we introduced uh, the LCP, and then I got the question, okay, if many associations are to come together, uh, what we do together, how we connect our members to each other. Mm -hmm. And I thought, now, okay, first we must state that we want to collaborate and then we will think the steps how we do that. So in our uh, conference in Vilnius, we do this first step and we have one um, uh, interesting part in that conference, not typical for a conference, it is called Let's Connect. And in this pa part, we have the idea to invite uh, interested members of other associations and also other participants of the conference, of course, to make one minute presentation, uh, to use a slide and to talk who you are, what you do, what you are looking for. And this way, we hope people will hear with whom they would be interested to connect. And this way, the new collaborations will be born among among associations. Yeah, so so this is about collaboration. <laughs> Fantastic, fantastic. And and getting that interdisciplinary group of people together and then the one minute 
who I am and what I'm looking, what I do and what I'm looking for is that's a brilliant way to catalyze, catalyze teamwork. And this will be hybrid as well, uh, online and, and, and uh, in place. So, and a challenge because we're doing this for the first time. I hope everything will work and we will manage in time as well. And also we hope for the interest of, of participants. Well, as with every um, ambitious project like this, not everything will go according to plan, but many things will go better than plan. So at the end of the day, I, I, I can imagine this is going to be a very, very fruitful uh, experience for your participants. Now, how would our listeners um, connect with this? Um, what, what are the dates of the conference? Would they find information about the, about the, uh, the conference on Customs Clear, uh, your website? Uh, no, the information is on lcpa.lt website uh, on the Lithuanian Customs Practitioners Association website. The conference will take place in Vilnius, the capital of Lithuania, and also online on 25th and 26th May. And we will have also translations because we uh, expect uh, people par to participate not only from English-speaking countries, but also in Europe, we must acknowledge that we have many countries which do not speak English. In Lithuania, by the way, we did a survey, and this is a huge issue. Only 60% of, uh, only 40% of uh, customs practitioners speak English enough to participate in such events. And also we'll have uh, attendees from Central Asia. From also from Azerbaijan. So we have on the first day, we will have translation to Lithuanian and to Russian languages. So what what we've talked around the edges, but if if you were to describe your vision for customs clear, what how would you how would you put in in a few words what you're aiming for this um this organization to accomplish? Um, I would start probably with the big vision, and I hope that everyone would agree, just we don't use this term. Again, we are coming to words, <laughs> what <laughs> words we use and, and how we think. Uh, I would like us all, customs, businesses, and, and uh, all the actors of the international supply chain who, who deal with customs, um, if it would be possible to use the word the ecosystem of global customs and trade compliance we all operate in the same ecosystem and and we all are connected by what by knowledge the knowledge is uh, um, in uh, uh, is how to say the, the key to, to to collaboration we all are knowledge seekers we all are knowledge owners and we all need to exchange to reach the goals we aim at uh, so in this context of the global ecosystem, when we think, okay, so how we come everybody together, who brings us together, obviously it should be a technolo technology, a solution where people can easily find the information, the knowledge. So I would envisage Customs Clear. Uh, to become such a place where really people come and find either knowledge or directions where they can go to the knowledge and people who want to share the knowledge, they, they do that as well. But uh, technological solution is not the life exchange. So I think the second very important part of such an ecosystem is the global community. So we talked to you about PNCP, about LCP, about many associations, but we don't have a global community where people could just uh, connect and exchange. And I'm, I'm thinking about such a community not only as people, but I think in such a community should be everyone, organizations, federations, associations, companies, and, and, and find ways to exchange. So these two parts, one technological, another community, and the whole ecosystem. Very simple. <laughs> Very simple and easy to accomplish, right? You should be done in what, a year? <laughs> Yeah. No. Very, very important points you make. And 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 your phrase, the ecosystem of global customs and trade compliance, that that is a nice way to capture what what everyone you know should be really aiming for. Yes, because everyone, as I see, nobody disputes that we are aiming at the global vision of safe, secure, sustainable, and seamless uh, cross-border trim. 
customs agrees, businesses agrees, the all the countries aim at. So uh, this is the connecting thing for the ecosystem. And and here we are. Uh-huh. And I and I've and I've read um it might well be on your website, but one of the, one of your vision statements is sustainable, seamless, safe, and secure movement of goods across borders, facilitated by those empowered by knowledge. And that that pretty pretty well captures what you what you've been talking about. Yes, that's exactly the same. So the knowledge is the key. Uh-huh. Now, your work consistently stresses the importance of innovation in customs work, always looking for new solutions, looking for solutions that that tick a, a number of boxes. Um, what innovations, technological data management or management techniques and so on, have you seen that in your view have changed customs work the most? Just a couple of examples. Yes, that's a, a great question. So I was also thinking a lot. So what, what makes innovation, what is important? And from uh, my experience, from what I was reading, I really admire Swiss customs approach. Uh, Swiss customs emphasizes that uh, they start the digitalization from uh, the uh, things from, from organization. They start from uh, creating the organizational structure, the culture, from training the people, from the people. Uh, so this is the first step to digitalization. And I do believe that this is very true and, and we should take this approach, which is not the case in many countries due to the time, due to the deadlines and so on. There are many reasons. And I think the approach when we implement technology for the sake of technology is, uh, is uh, accompanied with many issues. And maybe we should take a little bit more time and start from, from that way. And by the way, I also admire the Netherlands customs. Uh, there was a video, uh, a webinar, and there was a talk about the custom supervision dream of the Netherlands customs. Um, I think uh, they are the same approach, start with organization and then yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so to answer your question, the biggest innovation is the the approach, how we approach and how we think. The biggest innovation is the change of the mindset, how we work, the change in the mindset of how we approach technology, and the change of the mind, mindset of how we collaborate. Also, right. And and once again, changing changing a mindset uh, requires a a, a, a high level. Um, intent to to change, to stay up with the times, to 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 innovate, but it it comes. We come back to that notion of trust again. That um, changing mindsets requires that you're trusting the people who are sitting around the table and working working together. Um, you know what challenges are there in well in in organizing an interdisciplinary conference as you're doing in running uh, an interdisciplinary platform as you're doing and in organizing um, the kind of interdisciplinary work that Penn CP and others try to do. Uh, what, what challenges do you see in just fundamental differences in mindset between the different participants? Um, uh, yeah, so um, a good question. <laughs> really. So the challenges, I think the biggest challenge, I will come back then to, to the same. The biggest challenge is the bound, boundary between business and customs, at least in our region, what I see. Uh, and and uh, if you would ask, uh, uh, and you also mentioned that all it starts at high level, I really believe that everything is in the hands of the leaders. In, uh, be it in business, be it in customs, if we have uh, leaders with innovative mindsets, leaders who trust the people, who empower them, who don't say that the good are those one who uh, cite the law and don't express their opinions, who provide, we call uh, Brussels answers, uh, use such a, a terms, but really who have the opinion and who uh, don't, are not afraid to express that opinion and to change it. When you hear a better opinion, you must be flexible to change it. So people must be empowered. And, and the leader should have the innovative mindset. But here, another uh, tough question is, do we have such leaders? How, uh, uh, how we grow 
uh, such leaders, so many aspects to consider. Uh, and, um, yes, and I would like to, here to mention one more point, what, which recent days after the Brexit and due to various changes, is very apparent when I see there is a boundary between us and them, but there is also a huge issue of uh, communication in general. We see that when customs talk to customs, uh, they don't get responses, not talk, sorry, but, uh, but write an, um, a request, they don't get responses. When business write to customs, ask a question, they don't get responses. So I wonder what the kind of mindset this is. And, you know, at the end, the business pays for the issues, for the non-compliance. What are the best ways to encourage an innovative mindset among customs workers and, and an innovative mindset among businesses for in their engagement with customs? What, what, what do you think, just off the top of your head, are good ways to proceed? Mm -hmm. So the, the best ways to proceed... Uh, uh, to find the leaders, to, to have the uh, innovative leaders in place who really can uh, gather uh, the teams of innovative um, managers in place. And, and from there, it starts. Uh, as it is said with compliance, the compliance starts with the <laughs> managers, right? With the highest level, yeah. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Um, Yes, I don't have much to add to this, but but then the other question that I also raised, do we have so, such leaders? How we grow them? We come back to the knowledge. Yes, we <laughs> so do. If we don't have universities teaching the customs, for example, in Lithuania, we don't have customs programs. We don't speak enough English. So where do we get those leaders? <laughs> Right, right. Where do we get the leaders and where do we get people um, who are, well, the resources to, to sufficiently climb the learning curve to be able to make intelligent choices? Yeah. Yes. So the trillion dollar question, uh, how, you know, there's, there is an inherent balance between, and we've talked about this, um, between enforcement on the one hand and ensuring the safety and security and legality of what goes into a, a, a nation and economic facilitation on the other. How, how can customs and society as a whole balance those two apparently contradictory tasks? Do you see them as contradictions, enforcement and facilitation? Um, uh, no, I don't see them as contradiction. I see them as the two sides of the same approach, of the same control approach and facilitation is an, a very interesting um, word to elaborate on that because um, I recently I learned an example, a very illustrative one from Ukraine uh, and the practice was shared that there were simplifications in place in customs formalities. Those simplifications were abolished to introduce the AEO uh, concept to implement and then it was said that, uh, you know, and now only AEOs can use the simplifications. So what facilitation mean in such case? We abolish the simplifications, we introduce uh, the, the AEO concept, and then we call this all trade facilitation. So, yes, so I, I think as long as we have control and facilitation, uh, we need the third term collaboration, then it will work. Uh, the, the so, right way. So in a nutshell, what's the difference in your view between the word, the concept facilitation and the concept collaboration? Oh, uh, facilitation is comes together with control and it's one way. So customs either controls or facilitates business and customs decides what to do. For me, it's like, you know, the, that example of uh, seize the goods, I decide whether I seize the goods or not. So there is no exchange and collaboration is about exchange. And, you know, when we say we have same vision, same goal, uh, we, you cannot facilitate business to that goal. You need to collaborate with business towards that goal. So this is the essence. This is the key for me. <laughs> that's a key. Yeah, that's a key um, philosophical shift that a lot of people need to make in order to 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 push uh, um, cost, customs innovation forward. Yes, it's the key. I think. 
So I want to come back a bit to to, to Lithuania and 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 the Baltics. Um, why why do they care about customs? Why why is customs um, really important for for your for, for your region? Mm. I think what, what can I say? It's sorry, this is not for for recording. What what in addition uh, important could I say? Um, because we talked already a little bit about that, so I think we can view customs also as a uniting thing, uni uh, uniting thing, because what we see we see now uh, Ukraine coming into EU, and we hope that customs will unite us. We will we want to have customs uh, borders between us uh, one day. Uh, and also, I think customs is important for Baltic states. So Baltic states always emphasize that uh, the more we collaborate, the more we do together, the, the more we are united with EU, the more we are stronger. This is, of course, because we lived always in that dangerous situation, having borders with uh, with uh, Belarus, uh, Russia. Russia. Uh, and uh, currently, I think what is important that uh, really from Central Asia, the associations, they open up, they want to collaborate, associations from other countries, they open up, they want to collaborate. Looking from trade perspective, it's about building trade connections, but looking from European perspective, it's about uh, delivering our values there, exchanging, changing their mindsets and getting these countries closer to democracy if possible, and, and the more democracy in the world, the better for us all. Very well put, and that, that clearly underscores this interconnection between trade on the one hand and philosophical outlook on how societies are organized on the other. I mean, if, if, if particular kinds of, of leadership at a national level lead to particular kinds of authoritarian uh, decision-making, and that's not going to be the collaboration that you're looking for. Uh, it is so. And, uh, you know, sometimes we discuss, so um, uh, uh, we hear about trade, trade diversions through uh, Central Asia to Russia and, and non-compliance with sanctions. Somehow we uh, tend to focus on bad issues and to hear bad issues. But then when we start those open dis discussions that, look, we want uh, to comply, we want trade to comply, we want to deliver the values there and get closer those countries to us, then many mindset change and they say then um, yeah yeah wow really that's great let's collaborate oh that's exciting it must be exciting for you with your upcoming conference uh in Vilnius in in May to have uh substantial participation of of members from Central Asia that's uh, yes that yeah. that will be very interesting we are looking very much forward and by the way those associations collaborate among themselves also very closely so know each other and we are very happy that this way we are connecting right and you're and and, and you're showing how customs you're, you're demonstrating in in this event yeah how customs has a um a political as well as an economic uh, policy component and how those two can be brought together when you unite people in one room or on one on one um, um computer venue and enrica um what what in your view are the most important industry sectors or professional areas for the positive future evolution of customs this is a another very big picture question indeed so but but i have the answer so and and probably you anticipate it in my opinion the knowledge industry producing excellent specialists and leaders with an innovative mindset and also with the mindset of collaboration, not control facilitation. So, and uh, it is so great that WCO dedicated 2023 to nurturing the next generation by promoting a culture of knowledge sharing. So again, knowledge is the key to secure, safe, sustainable and seamless cross-border trade, and WC also says that by dedicating the year uh, to this topic. Yes, and, and by the way, one part of the LCP conference is dedicated also to the same topic, and it is called increasing competences in the field of customs. 
Very, very good. Well, that that certainly you put your you put your money where your mouth is in terms of 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 pushing this knowledge um, sharing and knowledge innovation as as the way to open open connections with 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 areas that previously maybe worked from a position of distrust or at least of passivity. It is so. Yes, that's terrific. That's terrific. Listen, it's been a great. We could talk all day, and I'm, I hope we have uh, a chance in, in in the near future, perhaps even in Vilnius in May. That would be wonderful. Uh, so, thank you so much, Enrique Noyoki, for this fascinating conversation and for sharing your insights on your work and on the future of customs innovation. Thank you very much for this exciting possibility, Tom. Great. You've been listening to Pushing the Envelope, Life at the Cutting Edge of Customs Innovation, a podcast that profiles leaders in customs and their views, ideas, and inspirations about the future of customs innovation. Customs innovators know this show as the PenCast because it's part of PenCP, a network for boosting customs innovation funded by the European Union under the Horizon 2020 program. Join us for our next PenCast for another insightful conversation with customs trendsetters and forward thinkers. Thank you.